Helen Cunningham, 1791 to 1839, botanist, explorer. Best remembered to us for his expeditions, his contribution to South East Queensland is quite profound. But before you can truly understand his contribution, you need to take a step back to the beginning of European settlement at Moreton Bay. To understand European settlement in South East Queensland, we've come to Brisbane. It was in the early 1800s that the good people of Sydney had petitioned the British government and the colonial administration. They, they wanted to get rid of their riffraff. They wanted the convicts moved away from this good old Sydney town. So it was Governor Macquarie that charged John Oxley with the responsibility of finding a new location. It was in 1823 that he explored Moreton Bay and when he arrived here, he was greeted by a group of Aboriginals. And his, to, to his surprise, three of them were actually Europeans. They were sailors, or actually timbermen or lumberjacks, that had blown north in a storm from Sydney to Brisbane and been shipwrecked. They could show Oxley around. They showed him where the Brisbane River was. They showed him some of the features and locations. So Oxley reported back to the government of the day that this was a location he thought would be the best location for a penal colony. When the colony was established, Oxley and Cunningham went on an expedition to explore the Brisbane River. And on that expedition, they could see the Great Dividing Range in the distance. And it must have occurred to them at the time that they needed to understand what was beyond the range, and even if there was a way or a gap or a pass to it. That would lead to an expedition in 1827 by Alan Cunningham. It would be the longest expedition he'd undertaken in his career he would set off from Maitland, about 800 kilometres south of here, and he would come up and discover what would now know as the Darling Downs. It was four million acres of beautiful agricultural country. He reported back to the colonial administration at the time of what he'd found. He talked about the timber, he talked about the soils, but what he also reported back that he thought he'd found a pass down to Moreton Bay. The pass was Spicer's Gap. This is the Spicer's Gap Road, and this is the pass that Alan Cunningham had reported that would be a possible dray route between the Darling Downs and the Moreton Bay Penal Colony. It was the Darling Downs, the area behind me, that was going to fuel the economy of the new colony. But when this area was established and settled, they had to take the wool and timber 800 kilometres back down overland to Maitland and then down to the coast at Newcastle. They did this for eight years and it wasn't sustainable. Their stores and provisions had to come back the same way. The need for a road or an access down to the coast 150 kilometres away was really, really on. And it was Spices Gap Road that was going to provide that important link. It was a stockman by the name of Henry Applin who would rediscover Cunningham's Spices Gap Pass about six years later in 1847. It was a much needed link between the Darling Downs and the Moreton Bay Penal Colony. 1828, and Alan Cunningham returns to the colony. He leads an expedition of eight to this location where we are now, and they'll use this as a staging post before they go and explore any further. Now, two other members of the team worth noting is Captain Patrick Logan. Now, Logan is the Commandant of the Penal Colony, reputation for handing out very harsh punishment to the convicts, but an explorer in his own right, and has been through this area before. But Logan gives us an appreciation just how dangerous these expeditions can be. 1830, two years after this expedition, he's murdered exploring that the headwaters of the Brisbane River. The other expedition member worth noting is Charles Fraser. Now Charles Fraser is a colonial botanist and his job is to report back on the suitability of the soils and the general environment for further settlement and agriculture. But it's from this location that they'll start exploring to the ranges and further beyond. Cunningham leads the expedition from Moreton Bay across the coastal flats to these ranges behind us, the Great Dividing Ranges. They explore along the Dividing Range and they're looking for, among other things, Spices Gap. They're looking for the eastern or the coastal connection of the Spices Gap. They find the gap that's behind me and they think it could be Spices Gap, but they're not entirely sure. Cunningham is not sure that he's found Spices Gap. So they explore further north 
finding nothing. So their doubts proved to be correct. This is not Spicer's Gap behind us. It's later to be known as Cunningham's Gap. And this is Cunningham's Gap today. But until the 1930s, it was nothing more than a bridle route. But the rising popularity of the motor vehicle saw the communities of the Darling Downs and the Fassifern Valley combined efforts to start planning a more permanent road. And when the State Highway Authority got involved in the late 30s, the planning really started gathering momentum. But it'd be in 1950s before the road would be actually complete, and it would then become the main link between Brisbane and the southern states of Australia. And it was named Cunningham's Highway in recognition to the contribution Alan Cunningham had made to this area. This pass would remain an important link until the 1930s, but it won't be until the 1950s when maintenance would stop completely, but still remain an important access track because a telegraph went through here and that wasn't removed until 1972. Cunningham's here when the colony is established. He helps Oxley explore the Brisbane River. He comes overland a, a few years later and discovers the Darling Downs. He discovers a possible dray route down to Moreton Bay. He discovers a gap, a second pass a year later. But one of the things we do understand is that no one takes up land in the Darling Downs for 15 years after he discovers it. No white man ever go, it goes near Spice's Gap for another 20 years. And it'll be 100 years before anybody really tries to make Cunningham's Gap a pass. But what Cunningham did was pave the way. He was a botanist, his love was botany. But we remember him as an explorer and he paved the way and he saw the potential of this area. Alan Cunningham, what becomes of the man? Well, after the 1828 expedition, a few years later, he returns to England. And in 1832, the colonial botanist, Charles Fraser, passes away in Sydney. So they offer Alan Cunningham the position. He declines in favour of his brother, Richard Cunningham, who's also a botanist. Richard arrives in the colony in 1833, but unfortunately it's killed in a skirmish with the Aboriginals in 1835. Alan Cunningham is then again offered the position, which this time he accepts, arriving somewhere in 1837. But unfortunately, he's very disappointed with his position. He's really the superintendent of the market garden. His primary job is growing vegetables for the governor and the public dignitaries. So he resigns a few months later, goes to New Zealand on an expedition in 1838, pursuing his love of botany, and in 1839 returns to the colony in Australia hoping to sail on the Beagle on another expedition. But Alan Cunningham's health is starting to fail him and by mid 1839, he passes away. His remains are re-interned in the 1900s to an obelisk at the Botanical Gardens in Sydney. A fulfilling place for a man whose love was really botany, but his expeditions were the significant story that be told in Australia. Hope you enjoyed our story. Why don't you join us while we explore Australia?